Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining us today for the Close the Gender Gap, Getting Girls Excited About STEM. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to give everyone a brief moment to pause so that people can log in. And in the meantime, I'll be going over some housekeeping items, OK? Um, so again, thank you for coming. And before we launch into the main presentation, um, these items will kind of allow you to really ensure that we troubleshoot and support you through this process. Um, so at this time, it is a really good time to review some of the technical aspects of today's presentation, uh, disable your pop-up blockers to ensure that you have no trouble viewing the slides or links of today's event. Um, also check your audio settings on your computers as well as your speaker volume and any settings that may be giving you some current audio trouble. If you're still having some issues, please see our detailed audio troubleshooting file available in our resource list under the Q&A window. If the console freezes or if you hear music after the presentation has begun, please refresh your browser. If that doesn't work, please feel free to reach out using the Q&A box. Also, there are some other icons that open up some additional features on the panels in our webinar console. If you can read about today's speakers in the speaker bio window, uh, you can click on the resource list and download a copy of today's slides as well as some other resources, or you can join us on the group chat, and please do. Follow the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter, and you can use hashtag EWWebinar. So there are two W's, EWWebinar, and hashtag women who master. Please take a moment, write that down. Tweet right now if you can. <laughs> um, but please make sure to follow us. Uh, we welcome any and all of your questions. Please type them into the Q&A box accessible through the tabs located on our console, not in the group chat. Also, we will be on demand, so this will be archived. Today's presentation will be available for the next 24 hours. Both the archive and the free to download version of the PowerPoint slides will be accessible through edweek.org or using the same login as you use today. And I think we can probably begin. Um, I may give it a little one more minute. I know there's a lot of us logging on, making sure that um, everyone is seated, seated, excuse me, um, you know, grab your waters and actually take some notes so that way you can bring some of these key terms and key takeaways back to your networks as well. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Ohilda Holblin, and I will be your moderator for today. I am the channel manager for the East Coast for Logitech. I am also a speaker, author, and educational consultant. I am a 2021 Education Reform Now Leader of Color Fellow. I am the global lead for Lagi Amigos, which is our Latin ERG group. And I've taught middle school reading for several years, managed after school programs, and worked for the educational publishing technology industry for the last 15 years. In addition, and lastly, I'm also on the board of the Coalition of Schools for Educating Mindfully, as well as on the board of Monroe College Business School. I'm a proud mother of a daughter with special needs who loves coding, gaming, and design. And I'm so excited to be here. You have no idea. Today, you're going to meet some amazing trailblazers. These women are the women that will and continue to just inspire us with their every day. And I look forward to sharing with them this amazing space and with all of you. Um, so I will take a moment now to introduce our panelists, and they will then talk a little bit about what they do, who they are, and we will continue this amazing conversation. Um, first up, Delphine Donay, VP and General Manager of Logitech Personal Workspace Solutions. Delphine, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, your passion for technology and science and STEM, and what you do with us here at Logitech.
I'm calling from the middle of Lausanne in Switzerland. So we have technology to help us have a seminar webinar uh, remotely, but obviously I'm in a uh, connection to I'm so we're having a little trouble, um, and I'm, I'm not being, sure. Yeah, we're having some uh, feedback. So, French is um, I'll give you a minute, me. and I'm going to go over um, yeah. to talk a little bit about yeah. you, as well as to uh, introduce some of our our other panelists as well. Um, so, let's make sure that we can support you and and get. Your, uh, your information up, but I do know that you have been in the field for so many years and have so much to offer. So I look back and I'll circle back to you in one second. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk to uh, Dr. Tarika Barrett, CEO of Girls Who Code. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you uh, became CEO, um, anything you'd like to share about your passion with STEM, and how you started working with Delphine, Logitech, and Women Who Master. Yeah, hello. thank you so much for that introduction and um, just for sharing about your daughter. I was so inspired. I got goosebumps when you said that she loved coding and computer <laughs> science. Um, I'm Tarika Barrett. I am proud to be the CEO of Girls Who Code. It's incredible, but I've actually been CEO now. April will be two years, um, and I've been with the organization now for almost seven years. And at Girls Who Code, we are leading the movement to inspire, educate, and equip students who identify as girls or non-binary with the computing skills to take on 21st century opportunities. And for us at Girls Who Code, it's really about creating equity. Our commitment to closing the gender gap in new entry-level tech roles by 2030 is all about leveling the playing field for our most marginalized students. And it might make sense just to offer, I know I'm talking to an incredible you know, audience and phenomenal group of trailblazers, as you said, but for folks who don't understand the landscape, women currently make up only about 26% of all computer science jobs right now. And when you talk about black and Latinx women, statistics are even worse. That actually is around 5%. And for us as an organization, more than half of the students we serve at Girls Who Code come from historically underrepresented groups. And so we're talking about young women who are motivated and ready to learn, but don't always have access to the same resources and opportunities. And my passion for this work is all about the recognition, because I was one of these kids in college when I went to Brooklyn College at CUNY School. Your circumstances might find you, you know, our students are working multiple jobs. They're carrying a full course load. They're balancing homework with caregiving responsibilities. And they don't always have those resources and that access that I'm talking about. And we know our students. They are the very embodiment of bravery and resilience, the same qualities that our companies are desperate to have reflected in their workforce, but don't show up in the typical academic credentials. And you know, for our young people, this can be really discouraging, right? Computer science is one of the fastest growing, highest paying jobs in our economy. We know that job growth is supposed to be about 11% between now and 2029, which is a half a million new jobs for our economy. And when we contemplate that, we can't afford to leave an ounce of tech talent on the table. And you know, if you're an organization working with young people, you understand how critical it is that we understand these obstacles, these barriers, and that we're providing tools and resources with our young people, our young men of color in particular in mind. And you know, since we launched in 2012, we've managed to reach Girls Who Code has gotten 500,000 students to code, uh, nearly 115,000 of whom are now college and workforce age alums. And for us, we know that by addressing this growing gender gap in tech, we are empowering our young people to seek out the thriving and exciting careers of the future, the ones that are gonna afford them, you know, the improved quality of life and upward mobility that come with a career in tech. And in terms of just this last point on our partnership with Logitech, we've been working with you now for a few years now, 
through our summer immersion classroom work, which is so critical. Um, and you also have been at our hiring summit, which is incredible because we have close to a thousand attendees where Logitech, among other corporate partners, get a chance to interact with students who you might not always um, have in front of you, which we think is so important. And I think most importantly, this incredible report that we'll talk about, which is, you know, what and who is holding women back in tech, these end up being such important research touch points for the field to understand what's often getting in the way for our young people. So we're just so grateful for the partnership. Dr. Barrett, first of all, thank you. And thank you for what you do. Um, I'm also a New Yorker, for those of you that don't know. Um, I am I am one of those people that did not study science and that did not have role models in front of me. Um, and thankfully, I ended up here. And, and I, I share my story a lot because I want everybody to know that there are opportunities. And organizations like yourselves and all of you that are on this panel are a true testament to that. Um, so I'll continue introducing and sharing. But you know, thank you for what you do. Um, uh, I got involved with this part of uh, Logitech because I loved seeing women who master and um, here to continue supporting everything that you see. Um, but in the meantime, let's see if Delphine, if you're not able to join us again, is your audio better? If not, I'm happy to introduce you. Um, please let us know. Okay, so I will go and talk a little bit about Delphine, and then we'll get to some of our other uh, panelists. Uh, so Delphine is a people first leader. She has 25 years of experience in consumer electronics. Uh, she's lived and worked in China, North America, Europe. She's transformed many global businesses with leading innovation and forming cross-functional global teams. Today, she leads Logitech's biggest business group, Personal Workspace Solution. Uh, her mission is to impact people's lives by creating simple and delightful experiences, a mission which she greatly influenced by her international journey, exposing her to different Western and Eastern mindsets, um, for example, China, um, you know, people in DEI and environmental sustainability, which are at the center of her mission. Uh, and it's rooted in how she really builds her organization. Her, her current organization is 50% female, um, versus a 26% global average. And she hosts 30 plus different nationalities. Um, the project portfolio she manages is entirely carbon neutral. Um, and we're really proud of that here, uh, our sustainability efforts at Logitech, with two and three products using PCR plastics. She believes that technology must drive more sustainable and inclusive innovation. And she's fully committed to realize the company's pledge to being carbon positive by 2030. She leads the way, inspiring others through our organization um, at Logitech, as well as her personal endeavors. And in her opinion, innovation brings change, and any change that leads to exciting new opportunities is where she's going to be. Um, Delphina is one of the 19% of the women in the tech industry that reach executive level. And at the same time, she is the mother of two children. Uh, she finds herself in the position of being a role model, which she views as serious and integral responsibility, and as such devotes herself to driving action for a more equal and better future for generations to come. We are here at Logitech lucky to have her. Um, she travels all over the world, and you know her leadership and her inspiration is so inspiring that we're excited, um, not just for what she does here at Logitech, but what she does for women in the industry. So thank you, Delphine. And I'm sure we'll uh, roll back to you and talk a little bit more about the program. So next, I will introduce us to Aisha Bo. She's the founder and CEO of Stemboard and Lingo, Blue Origin, and she was a past astronaut. I mean, I'm in awe. <laughs> just hearing about uh, what she's done and what she's accomplished. Um, and she's also one of our Women Who Master partners. So Aisha, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what inspires you, how you uh, led your, your life and your career in STEM, and also how you came involved with Women Who Master at Logitech? Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm absolutely delighted to be here and be around so many women who I look up to and I admire, and I get to sit on a panel with you guys today. 
I'm certainly a fan of yours, Ohilda, and Dr. Barrett, Nellie, and uh, Delphine. It's really, it's, it's an honor. I um, never thought I'd be here. I started as a, like a 2.7 high school student that wasn't interested in science and technology. And I ended up in community college where I took an algebra class that was taught by a female engineer at Ford Motor Company, because I grew up in Michigan. And this algebra class, which there's algebra in high school. So once I took the class and I passed, I wasn't just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a rocket scientist. But that's what it became. It became a love of technology that went from pre-algebra and community college to me transitioning to University of Michigan, where I earned two degrees in aerospace engineering, and then went on to work for NASA as an aerospace engineer for six years before I founded my own tech company, which I've operated for 10 years. And along the way, I've had the opportunity to host girls and talk to women and conversations like these make the difference. It's really difficult to um, be successful if you can't define what that looks like. And we are what that looks like. Today, I not only lead STEM board, which is an engineering company that provides professional advisory consulting services to elite organizations like the Department of Defense, but I also run a company that makes coding kits. And last year we served over 5,000 students with our self, sorry, our self-paced hands-on coding kits, which um, we've been able to provide to not only a number of states, but I will be honored later, um, hopefully in Q4 of this year, as, a, as the first African-American woman to go to space with Blue Origin. And so I welcome the conversation. I'm excited to speak with the uh, women and girls today. And I will tell you, I was in New York this weekend. And that is why I almost coughed because it is so cold. Yeah. So my hands up to you guys. I've literally been over here drinking Theraflu coffee and trying to warm myself because my goodness, I was only there for like a brief 24 hours, but I'm still cold. So oh, I, uh, yeah. I'll warm up my voice and get ready for the rest of the conversation. I'm excited to meet you guys and share space today. Uh, well, thank you, Amir. It's a pleasure meeting you, having you. I'm definitely a fan. And uh, as you can say, you, you can see, I said my daughter, she's nine, by the way. So when I say my daughter likes coding and loves coding, it's a nine-year-old who knows more about technology than I do. Um, but thank you. And um, I want to introduce next, and, and, and New York was negative nine? or nine and it felt like negative 30. So you were here in, in the brink of it. Uh, but next and not least, um, I'd like to introduce Nelly Shaboy, uh, CEO and founder of Tech Lit Africa. And let me just say that, again, I, I've been waiting for this day. I've been so excited. I told everybody I was like a little kid uh, because all of you are so amazing. And Nelly, can you just please tell us a little bit about um, your journey, um, you know, who inspired you and how you came to Logitech and Women Who Master? Well, thank you for having me. Nice meeting you, Aisha and Tarika. I can't believe you're going to space, Aisha. So cool. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> always being a big fan of Girls Who Code, Tarika, so I'm really honored to be in this panel with you. Um, my name is Nelly Cheboy. I am the founder and CEO of TechLed Africa. I'm actually calling from Mogoti, where I'm from. Uh, I loved how um, you introduced yourself, so I'm going to go ahead. I am Forbes 30 under 30. I am the recent CNN Hero of the Year. And right now we are working with over 6,000 kids here in rural Kenya, teaching them technology and mostly coding. My biggest highlight is that we have fifth graders right now who are building websites and their websites are hosted online. And some of our teachers are working remotely for companies in America. And um, I, I grew up here in Mogoti and I grew up in poverty. I really struggled with the most basic needs, even going to school barefoot and going to, uh, to bed hungry. And, and for me, I became so motivated watching my mom educate my sisters and I, even though people were telling her, you're so lucky you have girls. She really believed in educating us, even though she had a sixth grade education. She could barely read or write. And so I kind of internalized that promise. I wanted to take care of her. I wanted, I wanted her to stop working so hard. And so I worked really hard in school. I did well out of my primary education, went into a really good high school. High schools in Kenya are boarding school. And I also did very well out of that and was able to get a scholarship to come to America. 
uh, this is back in 2012 when Igar Sukkot was studying. Uh, when I got to America, um, I built a school because I wanted to see what it would look like to for a kid growing up in communities like mine to have everything. And then along the way, I discovered technology and I found that to be such an easy way to sustainably fix poverty because I just needed to teach people how to make money remotely and they could work for any company in the world from their communities because they didn't have to leave home to make it. And that became the premise of Tech in Africa. So right now we are working with 15 schools, about 6,000 kids. And our, our hope for this year is to onboard another 100 schools, so that will be 40,000 kids. I, I, met, I came to Logitech through Grace, who's a friend of mine who met on LinkedIn. And uh, it's just a, just a wonderful partnership. And actually, one of the schools that we work with is funded by Logitech. So I am really uh, excited to see just such a fruitful partnership come out of this. Well, thank you so much, Nelly. I mean, a couple of things, and I'm going to go into a little bit about what the program is itself, who and who master, a little bit also about MX. Logitech MX, which is the program that actually created and really has really been the, the leader in the Women Who Master program. But one thing that I did, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention even now, which is part of the report itself, is that all of you mentioned how important education was in your lives. Um, all of you mentioned that you did have somebody early on who supported you. Um, I had uh, my mom, my aunts, they were all very much integral in reminding me that education was key to my future. Um, so I love that you all shared that in your bios. Thank you so much. Um, but before um, I talk more about myself, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what Logitech MX is. Like, um, so the reality is that we all know that fewer women are entering tech than ever. I mean, you would think that now, given that we have so much technology, there would be more, but there's still an, an imbalance. And Logitech's drive is to champion gender balance, diversity, and equality globally. Uh, we drive these values with both our corporate initiatives as well as our business unit efforts. Um, MX strives to equip both women and men with the tools they need to achieve that peak performance to fulfill those aspirations. Um, and to drive our company's strategy, as well as to position MX as a solution relevant to women, um, we are striving to ignite an industry-wide movement to address systemic issues that affect women entering the software industry. Um, it's funny because I had a call earlier today, and in that call we were saying how um, you know we may create the products through MX, but you all are the ones that really make it happen. We help you in that goal. And, and that's how we feel that we support in your partnership, um, not just with Women Who Master, but just supporting STEM and supporting women who are doing amazing things like yourselves. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about Girls Who Code. Um, you know, we've all talked about coding. I mentioned my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, actually, she has special needs. So I, I like to say that so that people understand that coding can be for everyone. Um, she began doing it without her computer, learning, um, you know, how to read the codes. You know, doing so many kits like um, Aisha mentioned, where you can both have the technology piece, but also just learn the process. So um, our partnership with Girls Who Code is one of those that we are really proud of. Uh, creators and coders build a future. And Girls Who Code works tirelessly to close that gender gap in technology um, and change that face of programmers to make sure that there's more women, that there's more visibility. Uh, to help support this mission, Logitech and Max has partnered with Girls Who Code to provide the necessary tools from Logitech's Master Series, um, educational opportunities to pursue in 21st century opportunities in STEM, and we highlight accomplishments of women in STEM. Um, so within that partnership, Women Who Master, which you are all a part of, um, is one of those things that we're proud to really continue and supporting uh, because you can't be what you can't see, right? Um, if you don't see successful okay. women in tech, can you hear oh, me? Hinda, can you hear me now? Yes. Do you, you mind? Hear me? 
yes, sorry. Oh, Delphine, yes. <laughs> so Delphine is back. I'll let her, because this is her baby, really share um, all the work that she's done. I am new to this. I'm not um, this part of Women Who Master. So welcome, Delphine. Um, please share with everyone what you've done with Women Who Masters how this came about and a little bit about the report um, so that everyone knows the work that you guys have all done. Your team is amazing, by the way. <laughs> thank you. So first of all, thank you for the nice introduction. I apologize to everyone for the hiccups. Just so you know, I'm calling from uh, the mountains near Lausanne. We're having a team building offsite in the snow and we've got a full setup. So that's the beauty of technology. We set up a uh, something quickly, but we had some connection problems. So um, I'm in spite of all the testing we've done before. So I'm glad uh, I'm magically back on with everyone. And um, I just wanted to say, I, I fell into tech completely by accident, like Hulda, and I've realized very quickly uh, the power of technology to make, uh, uh, to make an impact in people's lives. So I'm not necessarily, I don't have a technical background. I didn't necessarily thought I'd ever get into technology, but when I discovered how much uh, technology can help transform people's life and evolve every year, it's so diversified, I, it's really uh, helped me significantly um, and, and motivated me. So now, uh, as a woman business leader and, uh, and uh, um, uh, who is in tech and mother as well, um, it's really important for me to play a role into helping more women to come in the industry. Uh, that's why, as you mentioned, Hoilda, we, we really, I was shocked to realize uh, that fewer women were entering tech than ever before. And because it's in our values and culture to drive diversity, inclusion, and equality, uh, you have to take it from a corporate all the way from a business level to also how you organize your team and how you engage with your partners. So for us, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very important initiative because we want to drive the industry movements uh, to help these systemic issues of, of not having enough uh, women coming into uh, the field and, and give them opportunities. So it was a fantastic um you know, we fell with Logitech MX in particular. That's a um, category of our products that focus on software developers, creative professionals to provide them tools to learn, work, and create, stay in the flow. Um, we felt it was very important to not just uh, play a role in um, providing the right tools for all these men and women developers, but also helping to change the industry and bring more women into uh, in this, this profession. And Girls Who Code have done an amazing job in really um, supporting this mission, engaging with uh, young women. And as you said, you have to really um, not only have the partnership, but also show everyone what's possible. And with the series Women Who Master, it was a perfect opportunity to combine uh, the technology knowledge we have, influence the industry, have uh, a really fantastic partner like Girls Who Code who are driving every day about education, opening opportunities, and then have real life example of what it means for women to work in, uh, in tech. And uh, having obviously uh, the w Women Who Master series, it's giving us the fantastic opportunity to show uh, what everyone can do. I mean, I've been so impressed by Nelly and, and the, the role she plays to, to give access to more uh, kids across the world to technology. So that's the importance of what we've tried to do. And I'm glad to be you even with you all, even if uh, we had a little hiccup. Well, thank you so much, Delphine. I, I really love what Logic Tech has done, you know, with the serving of the women and the people in tech. Um, really revealing those five key moments that determine whether girls and women choose a career in computer science and what makes that happen, right? Like, what are those five moments that either break through those barriers or block them? Um, and how can we replicate those breakthroughs in more schools, more workplaces, um, in society as a large, and, and how to support that success of more women in this industry? Um, the survey, you know, and 
the computer science survey that was conducted by IPO SOS among the sample was 400 adults, uh, 200 women, 200 men, and it ranged between 18 and 35. So you had a really good uh, pool of, sur of uh, surveyed, um, and it was working. It had been working for less than 10 years, right? So as developers computer programmers, web developers, software developers, IT. They had an array of um, survey participants, whether there were analysts, um, database administrators in whole. But it was, the survey was live um, in the US from February to 18 uh, in 2022, so last year. So it's very recent. And as you mentioned, the, it was hard to see that there were so many women that are, or less women entering in this field, right? Um, and some of the key takeaways of the survey, which I think is one of the things that we will continue mentioning in this uh, conversation, is that the early cheerleaders and real life role models really do matter. So, um, you know, many of the uh, girls specifically stated that high school meant a lot who teachers that were involved in that area, um, college also, um, as Aisha mentioned, um, but also middle school. So you have all these different role models at different stages in your life um, that can ignite that passion, you know, and passion is a key driver for entering the sector. Um, but one of the things that really was important that the takeaway did mention as well is that once hired, um, women really wanted a job that made a difference. It had to be meaningful. They wanted to contribute to society, and that was extremely important for them. Um, they also needed women to be in friendly communities, so areas where you get support, um, employers that are supportive, you know, uh, research areas, colleges that really have spaces where they can get together, they can have clubs, they can um, communicate safely and really feel empowered um, within those communities to talk about computer science and tech and technology and software. Um, another takeaway that, you know, I think we all know, especially because of the field that we're in is what meaningful action men can take and, and how much of a difference that really does make. Um, so all those men that are out there that have been supportive, thank you and continue to support us and, and help us break through these barriers. Um, so I wanted to really talk a little bit briefly so we can get back to the panelists and I can learn a little bit about um, what keeps them interested in STEM is what happens, why, why is, cheerleaders and real life role models, what is important? Um, and really it's because support is important, right? We, we need that support of one another, um, young people especially. Uh, and among the survey, 96% of the women in the field today said that it was a family friend who supported their choice. So family or friend, whether they were in technology or not, but they were supportive of their decisions. Um, and then over half, Right, 60% of these said it was a parent or a teacher who really encouraged them to study computer science. Um, I know that some of the initiatives that um, teachers and educators have done um, throughout the years is computer science for all, and then I know that this is something that's really important um, for many of us, but support of teachers in real life, it's really key. Um, and I really did wanna ask you all, from our recent survey, we did find that that tipping point is high school, right? So no matter, um, regardless of the gender, regardless of the experience, there was about 38% of women who said that that's where they developed their high school. Um, so I'd, I'd like to ask each and every one of you or whoever wants to chime in, um, what was your tipping point? Uh, and how can educators keep girls in interested in STEM? Um, Aisha, would you share some of your thoughts and feelings around that? Yeah, I, um, when I was in high school, I had a really difficult time because panels like this and most of the activities that you guys mm -hmm. have participated in were not really prevalent in my high school life. And so while I really wish I would have had the exposure in high school so that I could have made the decision, I made the decision shortly after when I was in community college. And for me, that came from people who believed in me, regardless of what they saw on paper. Being a student without a high GPA, being somebody who had a large dream,
but not a lot of necessary like discipline at the time to pursue that dream, I had people around me say, you know, you're saying that you want to study aerospace. You're saying that you want to have this big career and we believe in you. And that really to know that regardless of what I was demonstrating on paper, that there are people who believe that made all the difference in the world. And that's really what pushed me to continually dream bigger and hope to provide that foundation for other women and girls. And that's really what I've dedicated my life to, which is living your best life, regardless of the circumstances that you see around you. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Barr, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what was your tipping point and your interest? Yeah, thank you for that question. And Aisha, you are just giving me all the feels. I'm so inspired by your story, especially what you said about folks not seeing it on paper, because very often it's that resilience and the things, the dreams that, you know, a lot of folks overlook because it doesn't show up in the traditional ways that people expect to see um, those attributes. So thank you for sharing that. Like other folks, you know, speaking today, I don't have a tech background. You know, my entry point was very much being passionate about issues of equity and access, especially for our young black and brown people. And, you know, for me, the entry point was actually getting a chance to, you know, lead the team that would design and launch New York City's first high school ever focused on software engineering. And it was during that process that I saw that issues of equity were central and that it was so easy to basically have this school get off the ground and only serve the same students <laughs> that all the elite high schools were going to serve, leaving a lot of kids not having a seat at the table. And so that was a huge tipping point for me in terms of my work with Girls Who Code. But I really want to kind of double click something that I think is a thread throughout all the remarks so far. We know, and Delphine talked about this, Aisha talked about this, you know, Hilda, you talked about this too. We need more visibility and more existing role models in the industry because when you don't see that, you don't believe that you belong in tech and IT. You talked about 60% of women saying it was, you know, in the study, a family member or friend as an influence and 50% saying teachers. We still know that 35% are like, it could be a famous person or a character. You said it earlier at Girls Who Code, we say that you cannot be what you cannot see. And girls are struggling to imagine themselves as computer scientists. So, so few of them pursue tech. And we know that our girls learn in school and through culture about the Bill Gates of the world, the Mark Zuckerbergs, Albert Einstein, Neil Armstrong. But what about Katherine Johnson? You know, um, Mary Jackson, Grace Hopper, you know, Jean Bartik, Ada Lovelace. In their minds, a programmer is still a boy wearing a hoodie alone in the, his parents' basements or some maniacal dude in Silicon Valley trying to launch yet another company. And we forget that our young people internalize these you know, cultural touchstones about what a computer scientist looks like and does, and they end up getting stuck with them their entire lives, elementary school, middle school, high school, and beyond. And so that's why we're so deeply committed at Girls Who Code to making sure that we have these big culture campaigns in addition to teaching girls computer science so that they, you know, when we did um, basically Doja Code with Doja Cat or when we worked with Lizzo to create an inspirational music video or our most recent campaign, Girls Who Code Girls, disrupting the gaming industry. It's all about representation so that our young people see that because when you expose young women to these possibilities, you start to understand where their passion and their creativity intersect with our deepest needs in terms of tech in our society. Because the tech as we experience it today is frankly representative of the perspectives of a privileged few group, like a small group of people. And tech does not meet the needs of our communities and our larger society as a result. And so it's when we give our young people the chance to step up that you see them, you know, kind of as creators doing things that actually solve world, real world problems, which is what we desperately need. Oh, I so agree with you. Thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Barra. Um, we have so, we need like a few of these series <laughs> to continue this conversation. But um, Nelly, can you please tell me, you know, just from your belief system and um, what are some of those things that can break those barriers? Um, you know, what was your tipping point um, and how educators can help you 
uh, or help women and girls in STEM? I really love that question. So I first used a computer when I was 18, when I, when I got to America, and I really struggled with even getting my, my college ACEs done. Like, I could not type, and so I had to, to write 10-page paper, handwritten it first, and then struggle to transcribe it. And so I did not know anything about this, like the software industry or the tech industry. And I stumbled upon it um, my junior of college. I took an introduction to Java, and I fell in love with it. I think for me, it was the instant feedback. I just typed, so I just typed something, and it was hello world. And I, it was so instantaneous that I was like, I really want to do this, but I could barely type. I didn't even know what a terminal was. I didn't even know how to Google stuff. So I really struggled, and I was competing. I think just growing up in Mogotio, I was competing with my American natives, like American peers. They grew up with computers all their lives. And so I wasn't sure. And and just in passing, I told my college professor, I was like, if I was a freshman, I would have majored in, chem in uh, computer science. And then she told me, why don't you switch your major now? And I was like, I don't know. I don't have the basics. I don't have anything. It's going to take me so long, and I'm graduating in one year. And she said, oh, actually, the senior inquiry is just an app, and it's very easy to build. And that conversation was very transformational because then I just dropped my majors and I focused on computer science. I got a computer science degree in one year, and I knew that that's what I needed to do. I needed to bring technology and computer science in my communities, in communities like mine. And I am actually at a very privileged position at TechNet Africa because I get, at TechNet Africa, we get to introduce we get to be their first experience of the tech world. Because most of our kids, about 99% of them, it's their first time they're using a computer. And so what is really fascinating is that we are getting boys who are really interested in like writing very good documents, like rich text and making flyers and, and using a Ribla office writer. And then we have girls who love coding. And and so there's no that stereotype. So we are so privileged in that we don't have to, uh, we have that clean slate. And, and so I feel so honored that I get to shape, I get to inspire them. I get, I don't have to fight any of the barriers. And, and it's always so, so cool and then because these are still they're still young they're pre-teens we just see them working together just enjoying each other's company sharing code it doesn't matter if it's a boy and a girl they just are working in a really well coexisting system and i think that is one of the beautiful thing <laughs> of uh of my work well again uh you know every time you all, you all speak i get so excited because of the work that you're doing um, and, you know, I know that educators that are listening today can relate to all of you and um, many of you are started to say the same things, right? That you all started late or you didn't begin in tech. Um, but I'd love to hear from Delphine. Delphine, what could we do to ignite that passion? Maybe earlier, you know, what immersion programs, how can we really kind of um, talk about technology so that none of us, myself included, you know, feel that we couldn't take those classes, that we, you know, we waited too long, that we could still, um, you know, regardless of our past experiences, really delve into STEM and, and still be successful. Thank you, Huda. I, I, I think there's, um, sometimes we are so focused on the technology, the, the, the technical parts that we, I believe we can really help people understand the impact it can have, the experience, the end experience you, 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 would, you, you would participate in by uh, um, being in uh, tech, in a te tech field. Having companies welcoming students and trying to even show them the end-to-end -end process, how many functions you work with, how, you know, from an idea you suddenly deliver a brand new experience that will make people's lives easier. So there, there is something about giving exposure to influencers or people who have been successful in technology, women who have been successful, but also showing what companies are doing with technology and what's the end-to-end -end process, making it more concrete and real and not just focus on the technology. I also think that we, 
we need to break the stereotype and that's a challenge sometimes uh in breaking these stereotypes i i, I think uh, it's been mentioned that uh yeah we think it's for um you know um more boys with uh you know who lo loves gaming but it's also important to show how technology can create a lot of uh, ex um, uh solution for example for babies for kitchen for for all sorts of things not just creating games in the digital world they, they just everywhere so providing that diversity of what technology impact showing that it's not just working on a computer all day and coding in the in the web but really showing how it transform everything we have around us and and the, the role you can play and how you can learn different job and the fact that every year it's different uh, oh, so I, I, we we're here to also welcome students and we're here to provide many examples but i think more companies should really go out meet students especially in high school before they make the decision between one field with another and really talking to them about real life example and not just the technology of coding but what you're doing with it and how it impacts everyone Sophine, I agree with you 100% because there's so many different side of technology and so many opportunities for that. Um, and school is an important, you know, piece for for those students. It's it's a place of inspiration, and as women are strongly influenced by their teachers, um, so educators have that uh, ability to inspire and motivate and encourage um, girls and young women to belong in tech. That letting them know that they are a part of that world, that they can do it, they can achieve it. Um, they don't have to be masters in math, and um, but they could still be a part of learning and, and, and having access. Um, and, you know, so back a little bit to the survey, because I want to make sure that we, you know, are clear on what right now, today, women are feeling. And 50% of the women in the working field agreed that the greatest influencing in pursuing tech was their teacher. Um, so I'd like to ask Nelly, what can educators do to support our next generation of women in tech? Um, so what what we have seen in our classes is uh, is having these kids create something very simple. It can be uh, using Scratch Junior, which doesn't even involve reading, just uh, drag and drop or um, just having, just being able to imagine something or a conversation or, a, or an animation and being able to imagine that and create that. And we have seen the power of having an idea, having a small conversation and moving that into a product that they can share with their parents and share with their friends. So most of our most of our classes are actually project based, where we have kids follow a few examples, and then we they record and they present this to their parents. And we find that they quickly they just keep imagining. Now their world is so much bigger. They keep imagining of what they can create. And so sometimes I think um, for kids it becomes really complicated when they are thinking about all these different things, like about I like thinking about how complicated it is to be a CEO or a tech person. But when it comes to just creating something and telling them, hey, what you just did was coding and realizing, oh, oh, I actually like that. What else can I make? What stories can I tell? And so sometimes going for the simplest, simplest things, just uh, trying to find ways for them to build something because these are kids, they're very creative. They're doing Legos, they're doing robotics, just telling them that, hey, you can actually have a career in this, and this is what the tech world is. Yeah. I love that. Simplifying it um, definitely makes a difference. Um, I, I want to go back to Delphine, and thank you, Nelly, for that. Can you, um, Delphine, tell us how can we relook how we teach science? Um, how are we teaching in a way that responds to girls? Um, you know, things like removing unconscious bias, um, encouraging girls to speak openly and confidently as they grow. What, what have you seen both in your personal experience uh, here as a leader in Logitech and, and a woman in STEM that you think would help educators, parents, and anyone um, with their supportive women and girls? 
Well, I think you mentioned it's important to find maybe new ways of teaching. Not everybody gets stimulated in the same way by what they are learning. And uh, we know, obviously, based on uh, today's world, that um, uh, it seems that the way we teach uh, technical fields seems to resonate really strongly with men. But I don't think we've uh, even um, looked at some opportunities to see what women respond better to in terms of the stimulation. Uh, and it's more about the impact, the mission, and trying to understand how the technology is the tool uh, to get to an end result or maybe a bigger impact. So I think we it would be interesting to to look at this from a education point of view on how maybe we can adapt the way of learning. And I know there are schools, for example, now a new type of schools they focus on design thinking, user experience, and it's it's creating that um, that spark and interest. And then you have to learn uh, a lot of the different fields to be able to deliver something, but. I believe there is an opportunity here to relook at how we teach and how we can maybe create programs that are slightly different to see what resonates better with women. At the same time, we all have biases, uh, all of us, and it's maybe integrating more training for the teachers, the the um, everyone in the administration office of the schools to see you know, are we biased in the way we even um, bring uh, women or select women uh, up front and or how do we uh, engage with them uh, in, in terms of the differences we create between talking with a boy versus a, a girl and how we, we look at their performance because maybe some of them are intimidated by the environment and they may not speak as much. How can we encourage them to speak more? And and I'll share with you just one personal story because it's it's always triggered to me on um, how looking at things differently can create uh, a very different type of collaboration and result. When I was uh, interviewed to be hired at Logitech, I had quite a few interviews by a lot of technical uh, people, and I was interviewed by the head of engineering. And he asked me very technical questions. And frankly, I could not answer the technical question. I did not know the answer. So I turned the question into what is the end goal? What are we trying to, what experience are we trying to deliver for the user? What will make the difference? And focusing on what we were trying to achieve uh, made it a uh, very constructive and, and, and good discussion. Uh, I've been at Logitech for 16 years. But I realized very often with the team and the engineers, when we all work together, instead of focusing on how we get there, we focus on what are we trying to deliver? What's the new experience? So there may be you know, a different thinking in how we, we try to bring this spark uh, with everybody. Um, yes, well, I... I definitely agree with you in terms of that fear and the technical, and I'm thankful that you were able to not be fearful in your responses. Um, and I'd like to hear from Dr. Barrett. Um, have you encountered that? What do you think um, would help in terms of unconscious bias and how we teach um, girls in yeah. tech? Well, I do know a little something about this because <laughs> we have been doing this for a decade now. Um, and, you know, everything that the panelists have all shared, all of it resonates because at the end of the day, and it came through in the study, Hilda, as well, in terms of what you pointed to, we knew that in order to teach girls computer science, we would have to kind of deprogram, de rather, the belief that they had to be perfect. We have a set of core values at Girls Who Code that we anchor all of our computer science instruction around. And one of the ones that I guess I want to really talk about is sisterhood. The notion that you have, and we talked about this in the survey outcomes as well, a sisterhood of peers who you can lean on when you recognize barriers and obstacles within the industry. Some of, you know, um, Delphine rightly talked about the technical interview process, which is 
you know, very difficult and that we have recently dedicated an entire program to pulling the curtain back and making sure that our community has access to resources, demystifying the technical interview, and that they can lean on that sisterhood, you know, as they navigate the ins and outs of tech. And, you know, we also know that our young people want to do things that are going to not just improve their own personal and financial trajectory, but also, uh, you know, improve the lives of members of their community and the larger world. And so when you think about Girls Who Code programming, these are huge anchors and foundational elements that have allowed us to really teach computer science in a way that is deeply resonant for the participants in our program. And they can see themselves in it because we don't create weird binaries like you can be passionate and creative or you can go make a bunch of money. We really let them see the nuance of tech because we know that we're far past the point where we can opt out of tech. We can't tell our young people, oh, don't bother with that. Find another field because tech intersects at every every juncture in our lives, be it, you know, healthcare and medicine, voting rights, criminal justice system, everything. And so the tech that we have is only going to be better and stronger and less biased when our young people have a seat at the table. And we have so many exciting, you know, young people who are doing you know, everything from 3D printing. We also had students who recently created a filter for Meta to honor the legacy and artistic influence of Chadwick Boseman in partnership with Meta and, you know, his foundation. So many things that allow our young people to see the many possibilities. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, And I'm going to have, Aisha does have to drop, but I wanted to make sure that I asked if she has a minute or two left what her thoughts are and what can we do different? Yeah, and I um, I believe it's Dr. Barrett that has to uh, that has to drop. Oh, but okay. I wanted to- Sorry. So Dr. Barrett, it was a pleasure. Goodbye. We look forward to speaking with you again soon. Um, Thank you so much. What a pleasure. I still have goosebumps from just this panel and the wonderful things that everyone is doing. It was an honor. Thank you so much. Yes, and I'm in New York. If you need me, please. Yes, I will need you. So let's make that happen. (laughs) Take care, everyone. Bye. So Aisha, tell us a little bit about what you think would help educators in this uh, push to really open up and, and bridge that gap. For, um, for me, everything that Delphine and Nellie and Dr. Barrett said really resonated because I think that there's a awareness around providing educators with hands-on immersive tool sets that they can use without having to be extensively trained on them that allow their students to engage and engage in innovative and exciting ways that create community and partnership. Last year with Lingo, we worked with over 5,000 learners in multiple countries. And the one thing that they came away with that every single site shared was that they built something that they were proud to show somebody or take home to their parents. And for them, that was a, a really exciting opportunity because a lot of the educators also said to us, we didn't have to spend weeks in training. You know, we're not necessarily computer science teachers. We may not know how to code, but we want to bring this coding experience to the classroom. And that's what I love about technologies that Logitech creates and the work that Nellie's doing and the work that Dr. Barrett's doing is because it's bringing all of these things together. Educators who want to deliver new and immersive experiences, who can lean on large multinational brands who have things that are easy to use, also that students can have an immersive and engaging experience that allows for them to interact in a way that produces an intangible outcome, something that's real, something that they encounter in their everyday life, and they could maybe even see themselves doing in the future. I agree with you so much. Um, We don't have a lot more time, and again, I could speak forever, but um, I'd like to get some last minute thoughts um, before we wrap up. Um, Nelly, can you just tell me something that you'd like to share with our community and the group and the educators so that um, we know where you are and how we can support you and breaking these gaps? Are you still here with us, Nelly? 
Oh, if not, I'll it. Okay. <laughs> I have made it. Okay, I'll, I'll it. <laughs> so, um, some some last thought for for all of us here on this amazing webinar today. Yeah, I think I uh, I have grown to be a very charismatic and confident person, and I think I credit that a lot to my K eight teachers, like from uh, pre K to K eight, because they really loved and supported me. And as educators, if you're on the call, I think a lot of um, you have a lot of power and a lot of influence in this kid's life. And sometimes if a kid is shy or something is happening, just telling them that it's okay, that it's that they're doing okay, that they, they have to keep trying, just really does a lot in this kid's life. And as for Techland Africa, we are, um, you know, we, we are trying to get as many rural Africans into technology as possible because we find it as the most sustainable way to, to fix poverty and take advantage of the digital economy. So if you are listening, you can head over to our website and learn various ways you can support us, some of which is uh, donating old computers to our cause. Oh, I love that. Delphine, some last thoughts to share. Well, I think we all have a responsibility in transforming and making our world more equal. And I believe companies are in the tech industry by uh, giving the example, engaging with schools, engaging with students, bringing more uh, high school students uh, within our offices and helping them understand the impact they can have uh, would also help tremendously. So we have to look at, from a business leader point of view, we have to look at it from uh, inspiring our teams to create a more uh, equal world and inclusive and, and bring this all the way from the top to the bottom, exposing ourselves outside to encourage more young women uh, to, to join the STEM field and also bringing all these communities and influencers together. So if, if everyone could, could play a bigger role and get involved and help from high school all the way to internship and, and obviously sponsorship community, I think uh, it could have a fantastic snowball effect and I'm very positive for the future. I think technology will help to drive uh, inclusivity, inclusion and diversity. Love it, Aisha. Can you share us your final thoughts as well? I um, I love participating in panels like these because I really feel as though the message of Logitech and Girls Who Code is rooted in doing. This panel and this conversation is not something that's 2D. It's the beginning of or a middle point of a lot of really meaningful actions that I hope people want to participate in. I've had the opportunity to speak for the Girls Who's Code um, Summer Immersion Series. I've had the opportunity to work with Logitech to provide girls with coding exposure in Michigan. And I hope the people that hear this conversation view it as a way to get out, get engaged, email Logitech, email Girls Who Code, right? Reach out to us because we all have a role to play in making the future more inclusive and more inspiring for women to participate in these in these areas. And so you know, get involved. These organizations are more than happy to support and are doing the work on the foundational level to make that future brighter. Oh, I love this so much. Um, you know, I want to say one thing before we close, especially because we're speaking to a lot of educators today. Um, I taught middle school reading and I didn't really say how I got into tech and how I got into tech was because I volunteered to have, to be in the first upgraded classroom when I was teaching in Florida. And it was scary. And a lot of teachers that were there for many years, um, they didn't want to learn. They were scared to learn. And I only say that to say that I was new in the business and the career, so I was a little bit more daring. But that's what we're here for. You know, the, the brands, you know, like us and some of the other tools that you have in your schools, call us, email us, ask us questions, let us know. We can then, you know, advocate for more educational consultants to come out, tell us what you need so that we can support you in helping these girls in STEM. So I wanna thank you all for joining us today, for attending. I wanna thank each and every one of our presenters. Um, I wanna tell, uh, thank everyone to share, you know, what we can then offer. Um, and there's a database of women in tech that um, 
we can continue as educators in, in communicating with others, speaking to administrators, going to conferences, really sharing those role models so that other girls can see themselves in that success. Um, so if you could just, if you're in need of information, communicate with us. You have the webinar link that you can go back to. You also have access to our on-demand archive, which will be made available at edweek.org. Um, that link that you have will be available for 24 hours. You can find articles as well as visit us on Women Who Master at Logitech. And anything that you need, I'm sure that if we can't do it for ourselves, we will do our best to support you. Um, and we're looking forward to possibly maybe having more. I see in some of the Q&A that they want this session to be longer. Maybe we can do more series. Um, so please reach out, let us know what you need, put it in the Q&A, and we are able to then later on answer those questions, support, and continue advocating on our end, whatever we can do to support your efforts. Again, thank you. Thank you for supporting girls in technology and STEM, women who master Logitech, and all of the programs that you see from our amazing panelists. Please go to their websites. Please support them as well. Um, it takes all of us a village, um, but we can achieve that equality that we're looking for. And thanks again, everyone. <laughs>